Welcome, I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building, and today on The Build Show, we're gonna talk about rain screen. And we're not gonna have the conversation as to why you need to rain screen, other than if you ventilate on the backside, things will dry, things that dry last longer than things that don't. What we wanna talk about is the product that we're using, why we're using it, and a little bit of a like myth behind rain screens. So number one, a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch space behind your cladding. Your cladding could be stucco, it could be hardy siding here, it could be uh, boral siding, any kind of siding. If you have a quarter to a three eighths of an inch, anywhere in there, that is enough space for that cladding to ventilate, to dry, and to last longer. You don't need huge spaces, and we also don't want really small spaces, or really small spaces more likely to get clogged in the installation process, or um, something of the sort. A quarter of an inch is what you need. That will give you the opportunity to dry. That'll give you the drying potential that you want for your cladding to last longer. Number two, you don't have to use a fancy product here. There are lots of manufacturers that make lots of really adequate, really good products that you can rely on. However, not all of those products are necessary. Sure, in an EFIS or stucco installation, one of those 3D printed matrix products is really good and does a fantastic job, and I wouldn't recommend doing it any other way. However, in a lap siding installation like this, those things are overkill. Those things hurt the budget a little bit, and it's easier to use a simple product. So you could go to a one by, a lot of people do like one by strapping. Uh, some people will use the corrugated uh, like political yard sign material, which is a great, it's cost effective, it lasts for a long time, it's ventilated. Uh, but what we're using here is we ask our lumber yard to take four by eight sheets of three eighths fur exterior plywood. So if you would have built a house in the 70s, this could be something that could wind up on the outside of your house as the cladding itself, and then the, the painters would just paint it. Here, we ask them to rip it to an inch and a half, we install it over top of each one of our studs so we get the same stud layout spacing for nailing our cladding to that we built our house with, but we have that 3 eighths of an inch gap here. And we've used a cost effective product. We let the lumber yard rip it for us. It's dirt cheap to have it ripped at the lumber yard. It's cheaper than we can rip it on site for ourselves. And then all we have to do is tack it up here. We have a Zip R product, so we have an inch and a half between this face and the actual stud. So we're putting these up with framing nails, that way we really know that this thing's not going anywhere, it's rock solid. Because we're going to hang hundreds of pounds worth of siding on the outside of it. We want to make sure it's not going anywhere. That's the, uh, the plywood gives us quite a bit of durability there that we're really happy with. Uh, so the number one is spacing, number two is you don't have to have a fancy, fancy product, number three even though the term is rain screening, you don't have to have a bug screen at the top and the bottom. If you're ventilated top and bottom, fully ventilated, the natural stack effect that happens on this wall will move enough air that things won't get back in there and live. And I know that people panic when you say that. Oh, what about wasp or mud daubers building nests back there? First, if you're only three-eighths of an inch, there's not a ton of space, so that limits any bugs that could get back there anyway, because there's plenty that wouldn't fit in that space. Number two, that air moving is enough to keep them, keep them out of there. And if you think about, sometimes we'll do an open joint rain screen cladding. So we've done a couple houses that have cedar siding, they have a quarter of an inch gap between each piece of siding. Instead of being a lap, we would have to screen the entire wall. We have houses that are five, ten years old that have that assembly, no insect problems. If it's ventilated top and bottom, not just a, a drainage plane, if it's actually ventilated top and bottom, natural stack effect, the air moving through there keeps them out. So there's three little tricks and tips for rain screening. Stay tuned for more from us. Check me out on Instagram. Thanks for watching The Build Show.